Ministers Prayer Network International Apostolic Women Global Summit 2018. Speakers include Reverend Professor and Reverend Mrs. Mozi Maduba, Prophetess Sabina Akachuku, Pastor Sarah Omaku Abuja, Dr. Pamela Eze Uzamaka, Prophetess Yinka John, UK, Dr. Brenda Kelly, USA, Dr. Sam Kalo, PCN, Dr. Stella Emmanuel, USA, Pastor Helen Oyitso, RCCG Lagos, Pastor Isaiah Oji, Anglican Communion, Apostle and Mrs. Remy Bruna, USA, Dr. Alisa Hamilton, Trinidad and Tobago, Professor Edith Wosu, Dr. Margaret Ungu, Dr. Choma Ibezin, Pastor Pamela Ogwe, Kenya, and other anointed speakers. Theme, Higher Grounds. Date, July 22nd to 27th, 2018. Venue, International Convention Center, Gilgal, Obuzo, Asa, along Port Harcourt, Aba Expressway, Abia State, Nigeria. For inquiries, call 0907-999-0000 or 0803-47 09941. You can also call 0803-362-6795. Apostolic Women Global Summit 2018. Jesus is Lord forever. Tonight I am asked to speak on conquering new grounds. But my heart is heavy. So many things to talk about. I look through the program. Normally, we will have a major message of prayer because this is a prayer gathering. We've been praying, but I always want to have a teaching on prayer. I normally call it prayer power. Many people are crazy about financial power, it's good. Many have fallen into many snares, into many temptations because of it. Today in our country, people assassinate others, kill people because of political power. Among the nations, some are very arrogant because of their military power. But there is a power that you don't pay money to get you only require discipline and commitment and you can control all the other powers it's called prayer power with it you can bring the hand of the almighty the one that created the universe to work on your behalf with it you can reduce fairy burning furnace to nothing with it you can meet lions and they can't do you anything. With it, you can be a queen in a foreign land like Esther. With it, you can rule in the government and the empire of a place where you are not a native. You are taken to captivity like Daniel. You can be the influential figure in a whole empire and territory because you pray. And they tried to find fault with Daniel. They said you cannot find fault with him except in his prayer life. And this is Gilgal. It's a place of prayer. While we may not have a specific time to talk about prayer power, we want to make it clear to us that this is a prayer movement. We seek to understand prayer. We seek to pray prayer in its purest, most powerful way. We seek to partner with God in the place of prayer to give birth to the things that God wants to do on the surface of the earth. With it, we seek the transformation of lives, families, cities, states, nations continent and there's nothing that God has ever done on the surface of the earth without having some people to pray except at the beginning of creation when the Holy Spirit you know had to do the recreating of the atmosphere preparing it for creation 
from that time till now, God has always looked and sought for a man or a woman who will stand in the gap and pray so that he can do what he needs to do. For Israel to come out of bondage, they prayed, they wailed, they cried. For Israel to come out of Babylon, there was a Daniel that prayed. For Jerusalem to be rebuilt in the days of Nehemiah, that was a Nehemiah that mobilized prayer and himself fasted and prayed on a constant basis. For a Jesus that went to the cross and obtained our salvation, that I know a Jesus that prayed. Not two days, not weeks, 40 days and 40 nights in the cold mountains of Israel. This is a call so that we can return to their places of prayer and not just reactivate the intensity with which we pray, but upgrade it to another level. I had mentioned to us that there are different types of prayer. You enter his court by washing your hand. He taught Israel, you know, each time that the priests were to enter into the temple, there was a place they washed their hands and washed their feet. And that's where Muhammad and his people borrowed the washing of their legs. The idea was to make yourself clean. He was using physical things to teach them about the things of the spirit. And so the first prayer you need to pray is a prayer of repentance, of things you should do that you never did, things you did and you did them wrongly, and things that you knew were not right and you did them. You bring repentance about your attitude that may not be right. You know, the sins of attitude are said to be the worst sins. When you act in your pride and arrogance and you inflict hurts and injuries that are not seen but deep and hurting and can kill people. You bring repentance concerning the dirty things that we see on the screen, on the, on the TV and on the billboards that try to advertise things. Holy men, like Job said, I have made covenant with my eyes not to be looking at such things. Sometimes you hear what things you don't want to hear. And you ask God, dust me off of these things. Clean my heart and purify my heart from these things. Sometimes you allow your emotions to overtake you and then you get... You couldn't control your emotions and you get unnecessarily and excessively angry. You ask him for mercy. Sometimes it could be God told you to do something. Go help somebody out. Give out something. And, and for some reason, because of the level of the place you are in the flesh, you argued with God and hesitated. When you realize yourself, you need to go back to say, I'm sorry. And ask him whether you have another opportunity to do the same thing. To carry out what he told you to do. That's a major aspect of prayer. You can't be living in sin and you want to cast out demons. You want to, can't be living in sin and be singing, jump and pass. You can't be living in sin and you're just doing things as if everything is right. Now, you need to understand that prayer and ministry is bringing a God to walk with you to do supernatural acts on earth. And that God has purer eyes than the eyes that can see iniquity. And he said to Israel, I, I should have been close to you, I should have been hearing you and doing whatever you are asking me to do, but your iniquity has made a gully between me and you. So talk as much as you can, I'm not involved. So it's a major issue. You deal with it and make sure there's a reconciliation between you and him through the blood of Jesus. And then boldly you can enter into the Holy of Holies. It might involve reconciling with one another. 
I don't know whether you have heard the story of a man of God who hurt his wife and then took off to go and preach. And God said to him, I'm not with you. Today you're on your own. The man drove back home and then bought, stopped at the supermarket, bought gifts and things, nice things for the wife. Went and gave to the wife. The wife looked at him and thanked him. As the man drove off, God said to him, you are still on your own. I ask you to go back home and apologize to your wife. Have you heard that story before? For many people, instead of opening their mouth and humbling themselves to go to someone they hurt and say they're sorry, they, they, buy, they buy gifts. They try to do nice work. But the God I serve knows that what you're doing doesn't make sense. You are trying to buy your physical thinking and human and, you know, promote your ego and keep it. Instead of going back to say, I'm sorry. So if you need to do that, please do the right things. And if you have to do restitution, please do it. We have a generation of religious thieves who take what belongs to other people and then they go out and open ministries and they celebrate the breakthroughs and tell their own side of the story. If you have to restore what does not belong to you, what shall it profit a man if you shall gain the whole world and lose your soul? Then I mentioned that beyond that, there's another type of prayer. It's called prayer of consecration. You've dealt with that. But you are going to a higher ground, a higher plane, higher than where you have been before. You are soaring into the utmost height as you pray to the place of consecration. I'm not talking about starving yourself to death, you know, by having dry fast and different type of fast. I'm talking about an attitude of the heart that keeps you at the disposal of God. I'm not talking about manipulative fast. To make God do what you want to do. No. You lay yourself at his disposal. Sacrificially. At that juncture, when God meets you there, power is poured into your life. Anytime God sees a consecrated holy vessel, he can trust that vessel with grace. That way you see power. You don't need to cry, touch, or cry, shout. You just need to utter a word or pass by. You see the grace of God work. Then there's another level of prayer. Even though I'm not saying them like they are in, you know, in sequence. No, I'm just different types. Number three type. It's what we call breakthrough prayer. Breakthrough prayers are the prayers that you raise to an intensity to enable you break every resisting force. Breakthrough. And um, Jesus prayed that prayer to break through the challenges of the cross. Hannah prayed that prayer to have Samuel. Mary, the mother of John Mark and her group, prayed that prayer to get Peter out. It's the prayer that breaks chains, subdues the power of the opposition, and paralyzes them, and gives you access to where you need to go. Number four, I have always thought about deliverance prayer not as casting out demons. Deliverance prayer is prayers that cause you to attract the intervening power of God to rescue you out of any type of bondage 
It could be political oppression and bondage. It could be like Samson held as a display of the power of the God of the Philistines. And he needed to be delivered. It could be like Daniel to be delivered from the lion's den. It could be like the three Hebrew sons to be delivered from the fiery burning furnace. It could be a deliverance from conspiracy in your office. It could be a deliverance from a planned assassination. It could be deliverance from evil. Jesus said to his disciples, pray to be delivered from evil. Demons were inconsequential as far as they were concerned. If you read the Old Testament, I don't know whether you will see where Abraham was bothered about demons. There's a level you get to in your life. You don't even bother about them. They bother about you. They bother about you. Prophet Emmanuel Kure, one day called from Kapanchan. He said, what are you doing in the waters of River State? I said, what do you mean? He said, as they were praying in Kapanchan, a monster rose from the sea like a leviathan. I was screaming my name and calling me to leave them alone. I said, well, you who see them, tell them that their trouble have not started. At that time, we were tearing down every altar of darkness in Portacot, from Burukri to all the way to Rumokoro, Rumokuta, or to, uh, you know, Job, everywhere. Using military people, using the office of the governor, using everything available, changing names of streets and names of places. The monsters in the sea were crying. They had lost control. We were not only delivering people, we were delivering the city, and we did. Portacourt you see today is not the Portacourt of 40 years ago. Deliverance prayers. It can be that someone is in trouble, kidnapped or something, and we call for the deliverance angels to move swiftly to the location and rescue the person. Casting out devils could be part of it. It's not a major. I want you to understand that in Mark 16, 17, the Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. And if you're not doing it, I doubt your Christianity. Woman of God, apostolic woman, look at me and hear me and hear me very well. If those signs are not following you because you are a believer, then review and upgrade your Christianity. But I'm talking about when the normal things that, are, that, that should not follow us, should be part of our lifestyle, are not working. Then that's a problem. But when they are working, to go beyond them, then you take them by prayer. Number five, there are warfare prayers. Not directed at God because nobody directs warfare against his leader or president of the nation. You look and face your enemy, your opponent, and fire them and you kill them, you destroy them. Warfare prayers are addressed to Satan, not to God. So if you are praying, every sentence you punctuate it and call God. Every line you punctuate it and call God. It just means that you're a baby Christian. You don't know what you're doing. I don't know how many of you could be in the military. You are giving the weapons to fire the enemy. When you shoot one, boom, boom, you take your phone and, and call your president. Oh God, I don't shoot one. Shall I shoot another one? Give me, give me power. Give me help. Help me. They will look for somebody to pick you up and send you to psychiatric hospital. You do all the briefing, all the discussions. You do all the planning and the strategizing. And then you coordinated by the tactical command and you proceed. And when it is time to fight, you fight. 
to demonstrate superiority over your enemy to subdue your enemy number six prophetic prayers the prayers that you speak into creation commanding them to submit to the power and the grace you carry as a child of God or to the word of God what do I mean Joshua and Joshua 10 12 say to the sun stand still moon stop they say oh God I beg you stop sun for me stop moon for me he spoke to creation because of who he is and has understood who he is and creation obeyed him in Psalm 24 verse 7 David wanted God desperately the regular prayers wasn't doing it one day he got up put on his prophetic mantle and began to speak to the gates the powers that be lift up your heads O ye gates lift up your heads O ye everlasting doors be lifted up let the king of glory come in who is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty and the ground began to shake and the lord began to move in that was why jesus spoke to a tree and he died the next day he spoke to the wind and stop say peace be still his disciples began to wonder who is this one yesterday he spoke to three today he spoke to the winds and they all obey him and jesus said how long will i be with you i expected you to be doing this speak to creation powerful miracles are not done by regular prayers they are done by prophetic action you get to a dead person to the corpse you call the name of the person as led by the spirit as you call the name the, your voice echoed in the land of the spirit as you call the name heaven responds and says who is the one they are calling bring the person and said you have to go back now as you call the name his spirit leaves and comes back to the body jesus said lazarus come forth it is a father in the name of jesus i help you please raise lazarus i beg you you can walk into your office and speak prophetically speak to your business look yourself up in the mirror and prophesy to yourself call yourself by name and say the things you want to see there are levels of prayer you finish praying when you come out and the devil is on the road you smile and pass you don't even talk to him because it's inconsequential if you don't know who you are and don't know how to pray when you see the devil wearing masquerade he starts shivering blood of jesus blood of jesus blood of jesus for some of you the way you plead that blood if you can finish it could have been drained long ago <laughs> and the final one is apostolic prayers and you are apostolic women it's good to know who you are and know how to operate during the days of president abacha a man had served in river state as the military administrator and was brought back to abuja as one of the principal officers Dauda Komo, and he requested that i come to visit them because we were going to his town for an assignment i was bringing my friends from the u.s to help the wife with a project in their village so i went to the presidency when i was going back they gave me two soldiers to see me off to the airport when i arrived at the airport at that time it was not as organized as it is now touts were trying to help me buy tickets so i can give them money i told them i already have my tickets but they wouldn't listen 
They were pestering me. I said, excuse me, I already have my ticket. They were trying to drag my bag, trying to do this. The next thing I heard was an explosive sound, two, you know, two, two times. Ta, ta! I looked back to see what happened. Each of the soldiers had slapped each person. Strong slap. And I saw people bending down, holding their cheek and walking away. The whole place cleared and became quiet. I said to them, why will you slap people like that? They said, sir, we're sorry. You preach to them like a pastor, they won't listen. We slap them like soldiers, they listen. It's not a good thing for a tiger or a, it's not a good thing for a lion to behave like a goat. When you wear the garment of an apostolic person, who do you think you are? You are an ambassador of God in the new church he has founded. You are a part of a movement that is the body and enforces whatever Jesus the head wants to do. You are his hands, his legs. You are the body. When he says that he wants to crush the head of the devil under either his feet or your feet, you are the one to execute it. You are the executive arm of heaven on earth. You carry grace. You carry diplomatic power. And so when you know that, when you want to make a call, you call like someone in a place of authority. And that's what they did. Acts chapter 2. When they call like apostles, the answer came like a rushing mighty wind. In chapter 4, verse 3, before they said amen, the answer came and was shaking the beauty. The Bible said that the, as the, the place where they were praying shook. They had not closed prayer. The place, the place was shaken. The Bible says in Acts chapter 16, verse 25, as Paul and his friends were praying and singing, said the chains broke. They had not said amen. The walls of the buildings came down. The doors were flipped open. Powers from heaven came and were scattering everywhere. Before they said amen. They carry grace that brings urgency before heaven in the place of prayer. And when you pray as an apostolic person, you are praying like Mary, the mother of John Mark in Acts chapter 12, who before they went to gear two of their prayer, the prayer was already answered. Peter was brought out and was at the door. They had not finished praying. The apostles didn't have the leisure of praying and waiting for two weeks for answer. They prayed and their answers were given to them on the spot. The attitude of their mind, their faith in God, and the fact that they had a world to conquer. They were on their toes. But when you have apostles today who are settled, more settled than local priests, they have problems. They're just one police apostle, you know, sitting down around, you know, they have a problem. These guys who had the wall to conquer. And they were on their toes. And that shapes what things I'm going to say to you tonight on conquering new grounds. You can get more on prayer. I encourage you to get a CV on prayer power and be listening. Or a book on prayer power. Study it. It's key to what we do. It's key to whatever God does on the surface of the earth. Like I said to you, it's been a challenge to me tonight to just say everything that needs to be said. As I realize it dawned on me that tomorrow is Friday. 
But I'll try between now and tomorrow. Many of you have never been to our summit before. I may never be there. But I want to be sure that you return home with as much information as you need to. So you can go to higher grounds. Conquering new grounds. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 1. And we're going to read three verses. 6 to 8. The Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb. He was specific. He didn't speak to them in Egypt. He spoke to them in the mount of the Lord where God introduced himself with fire and brimstone and thunder and lightning and trumpets. Where the Lord gave them ten commandments. That's where God caught them. Napping. Stagnating. Saying, you have dwelt long enough at this mountain. Turn and take your journey and go to the mountains of the Amorites, to all the neighboring places in the plain, in the mountains and in the lowland, in the south and on the sea coast, to the land of the Canaanites and to the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. See, I have set the land before you, Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them and their descendants after them. The land will come to you. You go to the land. Recently, we were in Zaria. When people hear Zaria, they think of where they cut off people's head and burn churches and then do all sorts of things. We were in Zaria prayer quick. We had about 3,000 people. When we combine the city-wide one and the university crowd. Evangelist Jonathan was there. The power of God moved so strongly that leaders from Medugri Kano came and said, give us our own debt. Our own will be bigger than this one. We are going to see what to do. What we are hearing we have never heard before. I'm talking about university professors. So, February 13th next year to 17th, we'll be in Kano for Kano Prayer Quake. And shortly after that, we'll be in Medugri for Medugri Prayer Quake. And shortly after that, we'll be in Sokoto for Sokoto Prayer Quake. Let the devil be making his noise. We will treat him as if he doesn't exist. Moses had encountered Israel, had seen God in an unusual way at Mount Horeb. So they forgot they were on a journey and settled down there. And God came to him and said, you have stayed too long on this sport. Take up your journey and move on. He began to mention to him more territories to take. You have learned to pray and you have dwelt on that your prayer pattern for too long. You speak in tongues. You have as well, no master, you are speaking in tongues that you repeat yourself when you speak in tongues. Your knowledge of the Bible is like stagnated. You are almost losing the ones you even knew before. There were days when your study Bible was marked everywhere. The one you carry now is clean. You don't study anymore. Instead of moving forward, some are going back. The way you aggressively pursued evangelism, you had tracks in your handbags all the time. People that came around you, you gave them tracks. There were tracks on your table in your place of work. People who came, you shoot them, and as they moved, you give them tracks. You don't have tracks anymore. You don't get tools for evangelism anymore. And it doesn't bother you. And God is saying to you at this mountain, for some of you, you are just stagnating. For some of you, you are already going back. 
You need to rise up. Take new grounds. Take new grounds. Take new grounds. Now, that's a feeling that we that you have. We, we had in Zaria. The feeling of taking a new territory. That feeling. The feeling of knowing the limit of your enemy that you exaggerated from afar. The feeling when you know that your fear has come upon them. When you were afraid of those who are afraid of you. When you have attained the height of climbing a hill and you got to the peak and you came down, you have no more fear for that hill. That hill now respects you because he knows you can climb it. So, take time and assess where you are. Draw a line there and cross the line. Cross the line. My daughter from Kaduna who produces tea, like Brother Andy. There's a level of creativity God has given to you that you have not touched 25% of it. It's a level of creativity that God has blessed you with. And he said you have not touched 25%. You still have se close to 70 something, 80%. Yet to explore. Draw a line where you are today. From tomorrow, cross that line. And the God of creation will help you. And so the Lord said this to Moses. But, but why shouldn't Moses know this? The real reason why God called him in Exodus 3 was to take the people out of Egypt to a promised land. So why will he stop on the road? Oh, it's very natural. There's the tendency to sit down where God has shown you grace, where God has shown you some new things, and then you forget where you are going. And then they had to move. The message was very clear. Number one, your time on this particular mountain has expired. Number two, there are other mountains. And so no matter the heights you think you've gotten today, there are new heights God is waiting for. Number three, move on now. There's no more room for delay. Don't procrastinate. Take up the journey now. Number four, move down to the place that have been prepared for you. God has names for them. Find out the places. There's already another place prepared for you beyond where you are. Number five. Some of the things you are afraid of are afraid of you. God is about to give you new discoveries. And I want to encourage you today. Go ahead and conquer new grounds. Maybe you need to do, for some of you who are not here when Sarah or Mark who spoke, maybe there are things you need to tear down to enable you to move. So as long as those things are in place, you think you are secure. Some things, some ugly things need to go. Tear them up so you can move forward. On the 24th of the month of January last year, my daughter Yinka John pulled me to London. That was shortly after the global prayer quake and only herself can do that. When I was trying to recover from prayer quake. And as I arrived at her meeting, my heart was boiling. 
like I, I took the heart of God. And I want to tell you what God asked me to tell them. He asked them to upgrade whatever they call apostolic, whatever they call prophetic, whatever they call ministry, to upgrade it to a movement. To stir it up. To, to scatter what keeps them on one spot and convert it to a movement. Why join a train that is not moving to anywhere and sitting down. And the Lord made it very strong in my heart that that was the time to do it. That was the time, that was the time, that was the time. And he gave me a few points and I want to give it to you. Number one, he said God sent Jesus Christ, his begotten son, to save the world. But Jesus in order to carry out this assignment, started a missionary movement with a team of men. He asked them, don't settle down. Go ye. Everywhere, move. And in a short time, they turned the world upside down. You don't conquer the world sitting down one place. Some of you looking at me, you have been apostolic women officers for many years. One place. Get out of this mindset of chapter movement. Let's get into uh, of chapter mentality. Let's get into a movement. Whereby you don't have a permanent base. You raise a place and leave it. Raise leaders and leave it and move on. I stop going around one place. Try it. Note today. As you move, you grow wings. As you grow, you grow your capacity. As you move, you grow contacts. As you grow, you grow. As you move, you grow. But hang on around that harem and that castle you have built. You will soon disappear. Your life is going. And it is only that book they will print with your old pictures. The day they bury you, they will tell us your story. And don't let that be your case. Number two, John and Charles Wesley saw that the Church of England, the Anglican Church, has become a stagnant institution. And then they raised the Methodist movement to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. The first missionaries that came into Nigeria were Methodists. It took years before the Anglican missionaries came to Badagre, came to Jebode, came went to Ibadan, and then began to move down this way. Two brothers saw that where they were couldn't contain them and what was in their hearts. They tore an opening and began a movement. Today, Methodist Church has the biggest hospitals and institutions in the world. More than the Roman Catholic Church in America. The famous Houston hospitals you hear are owned by the Methodist Church. Number three, Elisha saw it was a tough task to tackle Jezebel alone who chased his master out of town. So he didn't go to fight him. He raised a team and raised a movement. He raised a team and you've heard me talk about the, the murderest prophet, craziest one, the one that is mad in the spirit. He gave him a bottle of oil so you're the only one who can carry what we're talking about. When you get to Jehu, take him apart, slam it on his head, and run. And when the thing settled on Jehu, he couldn't sit down. He got up, went on his horse. He couldn't drive it like a normal person. He was almost flying. When people asked him what's happening, he said, don't talk. Join the movement. 
we have come to a season where we need the accumulated saturated anointing of many generations compounded and rammed on your head that for goodness sake you cannot stand still you cannot sit down the meeting of Jehu and his friends came to an end when that oil was poured upon him his life was changed the pattern of things were changed what things were important to them as a group lost their attraction to them a new mandate with a new job description a movement it was a movement that brought down Jezebel not an institution number four I therefore challenge you to upgrade your ministry go to take and conquer new grounds your life first your strategies of operation your relevance in the city where you are your knowledge of God we talked about it in apostolic women today because those who know their God they will be tough they will be strong they will be unconquerable they will do exploits get to know him get to know him how do you upgrade how do you conquer new grounds number one break your old limits i used to do pole vault. i need to do jump high jump now when i was young and skinny when my stomach had not become big and i used to do it very well and i can put that stick down and while it's still in the air, I will travel on that pole to the tip. Skill. And even make fun there. Throw it and then fall on the other side. People used to come together to watch it. Every time we are jumping, you conquer one level, you move it to the next one. Time comes when... The, People hardly can pass it. At that point, they leave it there. Tonight, at that point where you had stopped yesterday, go back and take your pole, move it up, and jump it. Take your limits. Look at your, do you have an office? Or you don't? Maybe your table looks like a sewing machine. Go get a better table. Begin to live your dream. Take your limits. Of you. Number two. Move from doing works for God to doing mighty works for God. Romans 15 verse 18 to 21 Paul said, what mighty works we did. Mighty, mighty works. Today, tonight, this afternoon, it's good now, I'm remembering this. I was talking with our missionaries. They have testimonies. I was supposed to be reminded by Apostle Dr. Sonny Okigwe. He didn't remind me. Those people have testimonies. Move from doing works to my word. Number three, move from doing miracles to unusual miracles. Acts 19.11 said unusual miracles. Come on, take, go beyond your limits. Go, go extreme in the positive direction. Number four, Peter and the 11 apostles started church but when Paul joined them he started a movement. Those guys like to stay in one city and become Pope, become Apostle. When Paul joined them, he began to tour cities. Corinth, Ephesus, Colossae, all these places, Crete. And those guys were still in Jerusalem until trouble came out. The one that starts a movement is one that impacts the world. The one that starts the movement 
is the one that really, really impacts the world. Break up your camp. Tear down some structures. Become mobile. Then you can conquer new grants. The grants won't come to you. You have to, unless you want them to conquer you. You have to go to conquer the grounds. You have to. Brethren, you have had several sermons and teachings. God is calling us to action. Action, 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 action. God is asking you go and conquer new grounds. Your world is waiting for you. We have prophecies to be fulfilled. The devil is getting crazier and crazier and we want to match him for his harassing us. During the Biafran Civil War, there's a song that uh, our radio station would normally sing. And of course the soldiers will sing that song. The devil has a battle and one a lot. We see the uprising of so called herdsmen and all that. Kai Maliga Bazakatoka. Time has come when the ground will swallow some people. Time has come when the God of Elijah will bring some fire down yeah. and burn some 50 and burn some 100 and the rest will begin to think straight. Yeah. I said to them that day in Reverend Yinka's meeting, I said, we need new names for Britain. They had William Carey, Andrew Fuller, John Scottleaf, who started the pray, British prayer unions like MPN that started the Great Awakenings. Yes, they had John Knox who would pray so passionately asking God to give him Scotland or he would die. Yes, they had Evan Roberts who at the age of 27 with little education shook the whole world and the whole world came to him you know they need new names why should we be quoting those who are dead when there are people who are living what are they living for That's why I told our people to stop singing. Lord, send me another Elijah. He can't come back. Stop singing like that. Ask him to make you another Elijah. To bring the fire down. That's my prayer. And that's my song for this time. May the God of heaven rend the heavens. And hear us. I mean, the boundaries you set for yourself and the devil has set for you tonight be broken in the name of Jesus. May you have the courage to go beyond those boundaries. And may the Lord be quick on you and, and release on you grace that will cause the world around you to pay attention to you. Oh, yes. I want that kind of grace. Malika Patuka. The grace that you can walk into the hospital, maybe London Hospital, and everybody you see in the bed say, Get up. And they get up and give you a hug. You walk through the wards and empty and discharge everybody, and the place becomes empty. I bet you tomorrow morning it will be headline news. Amen. Father, we want uncommon grace. Amen. Uncommon grace. Amen. Uncommon grace. 
common grace. Shall we stand? God, make me another Elijah to bring your fire down. Send your fire also to heal the sick, raise the dead, glorify God. I want to be alone. Sing it like a prayer one more time, Lord. Send me alone. To bring your fire, send your fire, also send the rain to heal the sea, raise the dead, and glorify your name. Lord, I want to be another Elijah. Sing it one more time. It's subjective. Lord, take me another Elijah. Here to build your fire. Oh yes. Send the fire. Send the send the rain. To hear the sea. new grace something unusual Our turn is your turn. Grab it. Take it. Demonstrate it. What are you waiting for?
go ahead and prophetically break the old boundaries if you need to kick them kick them if you need to use your one hand to scatter them scatter them tear them take them away take them out of your presence cross your old boundaries take new territories we are going up the upward way new heights we are gaining every day we are not stopping halfway we are conquering new grounds new heights ah In the mighty name of Jesus. Pastor Zaire just walked up to me to the stage. I said he received very strongly that people have come to the point where they are sick and tired of the old. And they want desperately to walk into whatever God wants them to be. I want you to pray this prayer tonight to thank God for your horeb for the mountain that smoked with fire for the place you received your mandate and the covenant but tell God that you have had him very well that there are other mountains that tonight you are leaving your horeb 
tonight and that it is now that you are living you are hurried thank you and it's now <laughs> until you say yes heaven will be watching you but the day you pack up your things prophetically and say I am living the cloud will move with you how many people are ready to move tonight you are ready come on say my father my father I leave my horror tonight and I'm moving into the land of promise conquering every mountain along my way give me the grace that I need the power the resources and let your presence go with me go ahead and pray that prayer yes I leave my horror up tonight I'm moving on I'm sick and tired ah yay Yes. <laughs> yes. Ah. It will be settled this night. It will be settled this night. Ah. Yes.
begin to round up your prayers in the mighty name of Jesus Lord I draw from your altar I draw from the presence of the everlasting furnace grace unction And I sense in my spirit there's a breaking of a dam. Yeah. Dam controls the way water is pumped to supply power. Yeah. I see a dam break and water rushing out. Yeah. And Father, that which I see in my spirit, I release and cause to happen on the pathway of everyone that is here now. Yeah. And I release that grace upon everyone. Yes. 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 Go ahead and take it. Go ahead and receive it. If your spirit agrees with it, a new mantle will fall on you. A new garment will be given to you now. I, I see angels moving around to help people. A few of them are moving around. They are helping people. They are helping people. They are helping people. Yes, connect to that. Receive it. They're just moving. They're moving. They're coming your direction. Giving you help. Father, from every part, from Britain, we shall be receiving breakthrough testimonies. Amen. From Kenya, we shall receive breakthrough testimonies. Amen. From Syria alone, we shall receive uncommon testimonies. Amen. Yes, from the United States of America, we shall hear glorious testimonies. Amen. From Cameroon, from Bini Republic, we shall hear uncommon testimonies. Amen. From Ghana, there shall be uncommon testimonies. Amen. And from Nigeria, there shall be profound testimonies. Amen. Thank you, Father, for what we have begun tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 For inquiries, call 0907-999-0000 or 0803-470-9941. You can also call 0803-362-6795. Apostolic Women Global Summit 2018. Jesus is Lord forever.